pass. Yeah, you, whenever you're. The post gets. Okay. I'm hoping that I still don't have. Well, good evening, everybody. I think if everybody's settled, I think we'll, we'll try to get started. Um, Sean Baby is going to be here. He ran into a, a, a work schedule issue, but he's on his way, and he'll should be here in a couple minutes. So with that, I think we'll we'll just get started with the meeting. So welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, so this is a call to order. Um, those that are present, Chris and I, Sean will be here. The, the next thing I had three on the agenda is to approve the minutes. Um, so just... Oh, huh? oh, I'm the wrong one. Sorry. You're right. You're right. There you go. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> yep. Go, go, go. Oh, we can do the Pledge of Allegiance. No, that's all right. No, no, no. No, no, no. no. Sorry. That's just um, all me. So the item three is approval of the minutes, and I've kind of gone down through them. Chris, do you have any? I, I, uh, I'll move approval as printed. And I guess I can second, I think. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> all those in favor? There we go. That's the right packet. Um, and then item four um, is the discussion of the financial statements. So I think I'll turn that back to Tom and sure. team and Ruth to help us guide us through that. So what you see before you is the same format that we've kind of ended with and probably stayed with pretty consistently throughout last year. Uh, you'll note on the agenda, I'd like to prompt a discussion among the committee, if possible, to get further feedback on whether the form is suiting your needs. Uh, and if not, what we can do to modify it. Uh, there's been some back and forth uh, fairly consistently around that point. And again, we want to provide you the sort of uh, data points and information that's of interest to you. Um, and if this isn't it, we'd like to get some feedback now or in the future if possible. So with that, uh, we can have Ruth walk through this. And, and I think I can speak for her. If you have questions, by all means, stop her. Uh, and we'll do our best to answer. Please note that uh, there are notes at the bottom of most of these. Uh, those are intended to kind of flag items that uh, we thought out of, that were out of the norm and that might be questions um, you had. So, Ruth, why don't you start? <laughs> I have a couple seconds to let Sean get in and get, get, get settled. No, right. can you, we are Somebody must have been talking about me because I said my name three times because then all of a sudden I appeared on Route 1. <laughs> <laughs> um, the format, as uh, Tom has said, is the same as we've done in the past which is just a comparison of, for example, uh, we do these on a quarterly basis, so this is as of December 31st, 2016, with a comparison of that same time period for 2015. Uh, the balance sheet accounts are, you know, their assets, their liabilities, and essentially your fund balance, which we don't technically change the fund balance too much until we go through the audit piece. The, the pieces that will change will be your actual <coughs> revenues and expenditures. And hopefully, if we've done our homework correctly, the actual revenues and expenditures on this page will coincide with the revenues and expenditures mm -hmm. on the two following pages. Um, so if there are any questions or non-questions or no questions, we can move on. It's pretty much whichever way our balances, our expenditures and revenues go, which will determine what our assets and our liabilities end up being. So those kind of fluctuate with whatever happens during that time period. Um, Ruben, just, uh, you know, for Sean, as Tom kind of kicked off this process, I think last year we had lots of conversations around the financial statement and what's presented. And I know Tom and I have talked a little <coughs> bit, and one of the goals was to think about what do we really want to see and what, what should be here, what shouldn't. So as we go through this, and I'll ask kind of both of you as, you know, look at it tonight as we go through it, maybe then let us know any suggestions you have of more information you'd like or less information you'd like or the types of things that you like. That would be really helpful. To, then we'll bring back the next time maybe a different draft and mm -hmm. see, if, see if that works. So, mm -hmm. And um, we can pretty much <coughs> prepare it in any format you want, so whatever works for you. Mm -hmm. and and so, Ruth, I, I just had one question, which, which would be helpful. So, I mean, one of the things that, that we always talk about is the fund balance, the unrestricted fund balance. And so this is showing, if I'm reading it right, a pretty significant <coughs> increase from the prior year. And what, what I might suggest at some point might be helpful would to have some type of subschedule that says, okay, what caused that? I mean, this is about a, you know, a $3 million change. 
what were the contributors to that? Just so that seems mm -hmm. to be one key indicator that we can't focus on is what's happening to fund balance and what's contributing to changes either up and down. So, and I did kind of <laughs> notice that too, and I went through it, and the biggest change I believe has to do with the school department with their wet worth um, unspent the funds, yeah. which is um, we had discussed in prior meetings. And yeah. mm -hmm. but, but I'm thinking, you know, as we think about a new format for for, for those folks that are out you know, looking at this or yep. seeing the exhibit, mm -hmm. some type of explanation <coughs> might be really helpful, so. Yep. Anything else, guys, on the, yeah, on the first page? Uh, we just do, you can go page by page, or you want to just, in general? Um, Either one, I guess, is fine. Okay. Um, I, I had a quick question, Ruth, on page uh, three, looking at uh, year-to-date revenues. Um, I noticed that uh, licensing and permits and intergovernmental revenues are pretty far behind where they were last year. <coughs> is that uh, possibly an indication we'll see a shortfall in those areas this year, or is that just a, an accounting thing where we haven't got to that point yet? There were, um, it, for the, I'll do the easy one first. The intergovernmental okay. revenues have to do with something called the Betty program. Okay. Normally we would have received those funds in December, I believe, and this year in talking with the assessor who called the state, they said we should be receiving those funds this month. So that's going to be an anomaly, and that's about, oh, I didn't put the amount down. Did, they, a, did they express why there was, there was a delay? I, if he told me, I don't remember. Okay, no, that's fine, that's fine. It's nothing we did, though, from reporting or anything like that. Oh, it's no, state, it's not on our the state end. funding issue. Okay, okay. On okay. the state's end. Yep. Uh, on the licenses and permits, we're a little bit lower this year on our building electrical and plumbing permits than we were at that same time last year, excuse my typo. Um, I don't know that that's really an indication of anything at this stage. I think we're probably going to be tracking it as we go along to see how things pan out with those. I, I, I might suggest you flip to the last page, page eight. There's selected revenues reported mm -hmm. and the building permits and plumbing and electrical. Uh, they're all you know, tracking around the 50% mark, so uh, it's not a it's a watch thing. But I, I sure. think you know, we're midpoint of the year. Uh, there'll be a lull for the next couple of months, but then it'll pick up steam considerably in the last quarter of the year. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll keep an eye, but it doesn't look too worrisome at this juncture. So I, I maybe from a format standpoint, if we if we reduce the number of liners, something maybe doing more than just a one year year to year thing. Sometimes it's harder to see that trend, and if it's if we go two or three years out or something like that to, to be able to see, like, is, is, is the permitting starting to drop off? I know we do that typically in the budget process anyway. We look at the trending and we put that in, but it's, for me, it's kind of a check-in to see as we go through the quarters, you know, are, are we going to be a little short here? Mm -hmm. You know, and then we can start talking about the whys instead of going into the, you know, it's fourth quarter, we're short here. Okay, wow, what happened? <laughs> so did you want to say, like, by year or, or quarterly? Um, know, like a I mean, I think just year, year over year is fine. I mean, I don't, we didn't need to get into, if it was just me, I mean, I wouldn't just kind of year over year for up until where we're at right now and then year to date, like mm -hmm. we have here, just maybe add another column or two, just so you can see the trending to see kind of where it's been collected at that point. Because I think every year it's, <clears throat> it's percent collected at that point in the right. reporting, right? For both of these, yeah, both right. years. Right, right. So, I, 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 and again, it's, even if it's, it doesn't need to be a chart or anything. Even if it's just an explanation of, you know, five-year trend or three-year trend is we're trending up, we're trending down, we're, we're flat, we're level, mm -hmm. something like that. So when I see it, because when I see a significant difference between, you know, 60-something percent, 70 percent collected, let's say, for intergovernment revenue versus 41, that's enough of a, sig of a percentage difference for me to go, wait, what's, what's going on here? What's, what's, what's really happening here? Mm -hmm. just, just two other points. We did push all of those building permit-related revenues. Many, uh, all of you were involved in that based on... Mm -hmm. uh, best information we had. And the other indicator is there's a fair amount of things that are moving through the planning board as we speak, some mm -hmm. significant things. So yeah. uh, should some or all of those come to fruition, and many of them I expect will at least kick off in the spring of, of 17, mm -hmm. you will see that uh, uh, directly affected there. Sure, sure. And then the only other piece that I'd like to bring up is for, our, uh, for folks who may not have seen these reports in the past, we uh, essentially book all of our property tax revenues up front and then we create a receivable mm -hmm. so it shows like we've got uh, you know like 90 89 90 percent collected when in fact we're, we're just about 50 percent and actually that's pretty good because we're usually about 49 point something at the end of December so we're actually trending a little bit better than in the past 
So going back page by page for just a second or so, I, I'd assume page one you find useful, right? Yeah. Okay. Page two, which really is the expenditures, um, is that useful for you? Um, I, I, I prefer the data. Um, if okay. It's, yeah. for it's just from my perspective, okay. if it's too much, I mean, we can go, I, I don't mind even just looking at total general funds and doing it that, and if there's questions, we can dig a little deeper if need be. If you want to simplify it, it's fine. Sean, you good? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to summarize. Yeah, I'm okay with the entire presentation as it's presented okay. because we've taken many years to create what we have in front of us that I think what needs to be um, tweaked, modified, shaped, however you want to describe it is the conversation around that and then the explanations that go with the movement that happens because that's the part that's really been kind of uh, up and down for us and understanding what's happening. So I think from a presentation <coughs> perspective, you've done great work over the past couple of years and I, th I like this. I think there's just enough uh, for the committee to understand it. Um, it's more about the conversation and how that's shaped. What's happened in this past year? Too. Yeah, because that's what you, that's the most important piece. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the other summary is that um, I think that the document needs to be um, uh, crafted to the audience that, um, that it's being delivered to. So to me, this is enough information for us. It becomes a supplement no, because we need to have that conversation on behalf of the council. That's mm -hmm. why we're charged. And then the conversation at the council level really needs to be at the strategic level and what is going on behind this, which ties into, for me, ties into the dashboard approach and the benchmarking. So, so Councilor Chiazzo, you were saying you wanted more detail? Is that what you were saying? Uh, not necessarily more detail. I think more to, to maybe to Sean's point of just, uh, you know, an indicator if, we, if we've got a, a wide range or something, just a footnote or something, an explanation is saying, or we're trending down, we're trending up. Mm -hmm. Just something to trigger that conversation. Um, I, I mean, we, I, I can see it in the report anyway. That's what spurs the question on initially. Um, it just might help that jump out a little bit more. It's not necessary if it creates more work. It doesn't need to be that way. <laughs> are the notes not more, are you, spit it out. Do you want more detail in the notes, perhaps, or? Um, I mean, I mean, I don't, again, I don't think we have to necessarily be writing novels here. It, it's, it, to me, it's just, it's a, it's a trigger to, to, to spur the discussion on, mm -hmm. to say, you know, here's an area, it's not necessarily critical, but there's a, there's a trend here, and we're identifying the trend, and let's discuss what that trend is as it impacts the rest of the, the budget process. I mean, if permits are going down, that's one aspect of the budget, but that might be relating to something else, or at least spurs that conversation on, that, that's all. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I, I mean, even a, a little asterisk or some of this is beyond a, reasonable swing or something that we want to bring up and highlight as a discussion point. So then to summarize and Sean, I hear you say you think it, it's fine and I think maybe then, you know, part, Tom and I can work and, and try to think yep. about, but Sean, if I heard you right, is something more like an executive summary what you're looking yes. for? Is it the real highlights of, okay, these are the things. Narrative that, got, yeah. These are the things that we don't need to be, you know, just highlight the things that you think we need to know about and be concerned about. If you think everything's going to be fine, that's great. But some type of executive summary that just says, okay, these are hot spots or, as Sean said, a dashboard, indicators that well, suggest that we may. Yeah, so, I mean, in a way, it's um, kind of like the audited financial statements when the auditors give you a statement. So in that summary, you'd give any outliers, both uh, positive performers as well as negative performers, yeah. and what the top issues are, um, and then an opinion about whether or not we should be focused on any concerns around that. Mm -hmm. um, so, And actually, I think that would address my concerns mm -hmm. as well, uh, because instead of having to plot through the data, look at if it's there in the first paragraph, we've identified these trending areas, that okay. that's, that'd be sufficient for me. And then, uh, you know, as you move through the fiscal year, our our concern or our commentary, I think, gets a little more specific. Obviously, mm -hmm. in the first two quarters, there's a lot of things that happen, and there's a lot of things that can happen in the final two quarters. So right. from this point forward, we can start to really get a better sense of mm -hmm. these are real watch areas or uh, you know, positive or negative, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there, is there anything else you'd like to draw our attention to as, as, uh, on the, as you walk? We kind of interrupted your flow, so <laughs> the, um, I'll let you go back to your flow good and with point it. out. <clears throat> no, I think some of the biggest changes that we're seeing, uh, you know, the legislative, which is the council, that's timing issues. Most, a lot of these are related to timing issues. Some have to do with uh, new positions that have been brought on board in this fiscal year compared to last year. 
um, but that's pretty much most of what I was seeing for differences in uh, between last year and this year at the same time. Uh, the SOP costs, we, we tried to do some major purchasing, I believe it was last year, to catch up from the year before snow, snow weather. Mm -hmm. now the one area I, I, I was interested in, you may be as well, uh, excise tax, we significantly increased that. And if you look at the back on page 8, um, yep. to my Go delight, uh, we're at 57% <coughs> of, of budget, so you know, we're, we're looking good. good in that regard. And that was, I think we all appreciated that that was not necessarily a push, but it was a fairly aggressive yeah. uh, budget target, and it looks mm -hmm. like we're tracking right on. The new cars keep rolling. They do. So the, the one addition that I would like to ask, and I'm not sure at what point it should be presented, whether it's on an interim basis, or if only if it's at the end of the year. And it's really more of an internal document. Um, in business, we'd call it a compliance form, you know, a, a compliance statement that says, here are all the financial measures that by policy or ordinance or whatever it might be. Um, so as an example, we have a fund balance policy. So it measures all of those metrics that we've set into place in our policies, and it says, you know, here is where you are, um, and are we in compliance with that particular policy mm -hmm. um, as it relates to governance? Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to kind of, because, you know, year over year, trying to identify what percentage we're supposed to be at has never been clear. It's never, I've never really seen it in a format that's easy to understand and then be able to communicate outward. So it would be really nice, that one in particular, um, but there's, there's several others that are, if you look at that fiscal policy that we have, um, I, I think that there's several, um, if we're going to have those metrics, then we should have some type of compliance statement around that. I think our brief presentation on some of the metrics that we've yeah. at least started with uh, will help. That and maybe that can be incorporated, you know, as we develop more of the dashboard reporting um, that maybe become part of that rather than as part of your presentation, Ruth, I, you know, yep. whatever is the best approach as long as it's included. Mm -hmm. And we do have a couple other, I think there's a couple of compliance related measures in our debt management policy. Yes, that's what well, I was, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, are there any other questions on the <coughs> expenditures and or revenues? <coughs> Excuse me. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. No, and then uh, just the rest of them are yeah, our same old report. So if yeah. there's any questions on those or not. No, I think we're good. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good, great. Thank you. Um, <coughs> can I suggest, um, will you be um, forward this under the council as a whole, the report, financial report? Uh, Maybe as part of your next uh, report? Yeah, just, yes. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, that, that, that was your practice, right? When yeah. You were, yeah. Yes, and did you did you forward the whole thing or yes. just kind of the okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll do that. We'll have paper copies, or we can do it electronic, uh, whatever you prefer. Um, I think electronic's fine, right? Save a few. We'll be part of the yeah. That's up to you. Part of the that's packet. Too. And then we do put this out on mm -hmm. on the t the finance website as well, if yeah. the citizens would like to look at it. Or okay. See, in a normal agenda, that would be part of the consent agenda. We won't go down that path. Though. Not not tonight. Not, not, not tonight. <laughs> no. Please take that up for rules and policy. Yeah, exactly. Um, Serving committee. Okay, so moving on to item five, and it may be, you know, I don't think it's necessarily an action item tonight, but I, I, as, as other groups have kind of gotten up and running, thinking about, you know, goals and norms that we may want to adopt. These are somewhat dated. We may want to wait to do anything until we, the council's actually met and established its norms and 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 goals that were consistent with it, but just this is just kind of in here as a placeholder to think about if, if, if both of you have any suggestions for next time. And I think, Sean, the goal setting is, will be done before we meet again as a finance committee, I think. Yes. So the uh, goal session is scheduled um, tentatively, because I have, uh, although I, this is a positive, because I've not heard anyone say they can't make it, it's January 30th from 5 to 7 p.m. at the library conference room. Um, and it's a, um, the presentation is um, really it's the first of what will probably be two. Um, the goal is for the first hour to look back and complete our assessment for last year to make sure that we're all in agreement to the outcome and its rating or ranking. And then to look at um, the collective document that I've uh, put together regarding everyone's comments for next year's goals. I will tell you from a, there are several individual metrics and so one of those uh, one very consistent metrics around finance 
um, and a lot of it is very consi very much consistent from the qualitative side um, with last year's goals, but the least of one metrics is um, to, it's, it's that message, and I want to say this correctly, um, I'm trying to remember the exact word, it's to have a budget that is um, um, no more than, I think was the word, or maybe, uh, it wasn't less than, it was, there was a special <coughs> word. At or below, at, 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 at around, around or below 3%. At or around um, below 3%, so. Right. Um, keep that in mind. That's a fairly consistent comment that I've seen from all the counselors, or most of the counselors. Yeah. So. And I think that'll maybe come back to a goal. Oh, but it, it will be a metric that will, because to me, um, so that's not a, to me, um, okay. that's a metric. So it's what type of quality. It's an action, it, it's an action item. Yeah. It's a metric. So Outcome. we're going to talk about that um, as well as other pieces that go along with that. So. So again, these two things, both both the, the norms and the goals, were just kind of a placeholder. Think about it. If you have any thoughts, then we can finalize them the next next time around. Yeah, I mean, I just be curious on you know we're the same group that was last year, so yeah. you know maybe a quick discussion on do we think we met our outcomes yeah. from last year, you know? And um, I mean, there's no obviously we 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 voted them through last year. I don't see any surprise or anything new in there. Or anything different? Um, no. Nope, the, the only thought might be, you know, the the joint finance committees are going to meet, and I think there's yep. going to be a similar process there. So yep. it, something may come out of that that we may want to, you know, make some adjustments or mm -hmm. tweaks or whatever. So yep. yeah. In fact, the, the norm sheet that's put in your packet was in, the norms adopted by the joint group last year, and I think yep. these same ones will be going back before that same group, yep. including you three, at your first meeting. And that group's the same as last year as well, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, different. With maybe with one, 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 one different on the board of ed, but. Who? No. A new superintendent. I don't think so. It's a new superintendent. Well, a rookie. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the newbie, I should say. I should say. You know, I may have some thoughts yeah. about. And she'll probably be driving the meeting anyway, I'm sure. Yes. I just want to mention, so, um, you know, we've kind of, uh, to keep in mind that uh, while these are reaffirmed every year, it's actually, this will be the, fi the third year in which we have really been committed to this process so yeah. I'm really pleased that it has uh, grown into that because we had we kind of presented this three five seven approach three years to really do an evaluative and set some deck ground rules five to really start doing the analysis and, and metrics and then seven years to really do more longer range planning so I'm really happy to see this kind of continue because some of this stuff really shouldn't have to be talked about every year like norms right so yep. very happy thank you so with that, I think if you guys are okay, we'll move to item seven, which I think Tom and your team are going to sure. have that discussion that you referenced earlier about. I, I think you've your team has spent some time kind of. We have coming up. Yeah, with this is the starting point. Of recommendations. Um, yeah, the three of you talked a lot about this, maybe through most of the last year, and we. Unfortunately, didn't really make any headway, but I think we really can uh, do in large part to getting some additional staff resources that can spend some time. And uh, you may recall at the end of last year, sometime October, November time frame, um, we were really looking for feedback from you in terms of what metrics are important to you as a starting point. And Peter provided 10 or 12. Um, so as a starting point, what we've done tonight, um, and this is just to get the conversation rolling actually, um, are we in the back? And I apologize. Technology is such that I can only project there, so you okay. might want to make yourself comfortable. Well, there was some comment about parking access. <laughs> there was. That was for you only, Peter. <laughs> no, intended for your ears only, I guess. Um, so what we've done is, as a starting point, uh, the metrics uh, we're going to walk you through tonight, and we're prepared to have some conversation around kind of analysis and interpretation, but I think it m I might suggest that we kind of present it first and then it might take some time to sink in and we can have discussion and analysis uh, at a later date. But what we're starting with is some of the metrics that come out of the debt policy. These are in policy and so we think we better start reviewing them. Uh, they also are the one, many of the ones that the rating agencies thinks are important. So they may not correlate exactly with what we think are important, but at least they do and that's a group we ought to be aware of. And in doing so, three or four or five of them are appeared on, on Peter's list that he produced. So we think it's a reasonable starting point. And as kind of a backdrop to that, we've also um, would like to bring into the conversation some of the demographic metrics that um, affect us and we ought to be aware of. So with that, I'm going to flip it over to Larissa, who's done the majority of this work. 
<laughs> literally flip it over. Yeah, so it's going to pass over. All right, so um, yeah, let's start with the demographics just so we get a sense of who we are and, and who we're serving. Okay, so that was kind of the idea here. Uh, using, so for 2015 data, um, um, the Census Bureau has a branch called the American Community Survey, and the, anything that's reflecting a 2015 number is from the um, American Community Services data that was provided December 8th, and so everyone is able to access that themselves online if they wish to verify numbers. Um, so our population is going up, that's not a surprise. Um, what I think is really important to see here when we're talking about who we're serving and, and changing needs is the graph on your right. I've graphed out for you the percentage of population below 18 and above 65. And that blue line is your population percentage of the population that's below age 18. And you can see it's stepping downward. Mm -hmm. And the orange bar is the pop percentage of the population that is older than 65. And that is stepping steadily upward. Uh, we, I expect by the time that we get our 2020 census data, we should expect to see 20% or greater of the population of Scarborough is over 65. And I've provided the median age for you on all of those as well, and you can see that that median age is consistently um, going upward. So um, income levels are also important, I think, for us to take a look at. So we have a sense of ability to pay. So again, uh, you've got your table at the top showing you, I've used 2000, 2010, and 2015 because those are census data. So yes, if you were to go online, you would be able to find um, estimates between 2010 and 2015, but they are just that. They're not based on any actual uh, gathering of data from households. So um, you can see that our um, median household income is staying about steady. Um, these are all in current, well, somewhat now, not current, but December 2016 dollars. Um, and our mean household income is, has gone up significantly from 2000, but holding steady to 2010. Just a, a point, and this is a point of some conversation between Larissa and I, and I'm interested in, in hearing maybe some input. Uh, what's being reported here in the, well, it's reported both ways in the chart form, but in the graph, what's being reported is adjusted dollars. And that what do you mean by I, I've brought them up to current dollars. So um, if we were to look at, if you look in the table, so the median household income in time of report dollars, so in 2000, oh, okay. So if we were to say, oh, wow, our income's gone up as a median household income from 56000 to 77000 that's amazing. Well, it's also false <laughs> because that 56000 is reflecting 2000 level dollars. And when we adjust for inflation, we've, we, can, mm -hmm. we have to adjust for inflation. So that's why you've got the, the table that shows you both the report dollars. So you can verify the data for yourself if you wish, along with census. Um, and then I've brought them up using a cost inflation calculator um, up into as of December 8th. And then further, right. the, this yeah. is also reporting both mean and median, and there's yeah. some differences um, in those two st statistics, and they suggest some things changing. Right, so I've given you a trend line, uh, sort of, not really a trend line, I've given you um, that green line that I don't, I'm hoping that, is any, are any of you colorblind? Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, so the green line that's kind of cutting across there, that is, you're going to read that with the right-hand axis. Um, that is the percent difference between mean and median household incomes. If you want to discuss that at some point, we certainly can, but um, just kind of notice that it's increasing, mm -hmm. that percentage difference. Do, are we ready to move forward? Yeah. Okay. So looking at, um, everyone stop being busy here. So looking at some metrics. Um, so the data is, with all of these graphs, you'll see the, the table of the data that's going to be reflected then in graph form underneath it at the top. So we've got some debt, um, some graphs. Let me just kind of shrink this down so you can see. Or not. Um, so looking at just debt, okay? So this is um, 2006 to 2015, looking at You've got municipal debt in blue, you have school debt in orange, and you have total debt held in the gray. Right? Mm. You can see that. It, uh, one of the things I want to highlight there is that that blue <coughs> bar representing municipal debt, that is flat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I have not adjusted these dollars. So were we to adjust these dollars, you would actually see that blue, that blue bar would actually Going be down. decreasing. Yeah. Okay? Decrease? Yes. Yeah. If I were to adjust it for today's yeah. dollars. Um, so your orange bars are reflecting school, and where you see the, the jumps are where the um, voting population agreed to um, adopt more debt for funding of school projects, and that's why you see that jump in the gray. 
One of the metrics that um, was listed by both Peter and that is considered good practice for some of our rating agencies is that debt per capita. What are we holding as debt per person in the town? And that's what that graph on the right is reflecting to you. So that's for 2010 and 2015. Again, those are where I have um, verifiable population points. Uh, did you adjust the debt per capita numbers? I did not. So, so those are, I realized um, right before our meeting that none of, that I had done a great job of bringing us into current dollars with our uh, demographics and that I hadn't done so with these. So I think those, mm -hmm. as far as the trends are concerned, we can get a sense of, of what mm -hmm. that looks like. Um, and for your municipal debt per capita dollars, um, right now, if I am clicking here, where do I get my, it's not letting me see the number. Um, you are at just over $3,000 in school debt per capita, and for total debt per capita, we're just about $5,000. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So then we... As a footnote, uh, a separate project that's certainly related is, uh, is doing some benchmarking with other communities, so we can do some kind of comparative analysis, and that's a project that we're just kicking off. The, there'll be some months before we get that data back, but debt per capita would be an interesting one to see how we compare to mm -hmm. our peers. Yeah. In state and out of state. And you'll have that actually, um, Ruth and I attended that meeting yesterday, and the idea is I believe that we will have that data to benchmark ourselves to our neighboring communities by the end of February, beginning of March, if I'm understanding. So that should be coming to us soon. So then we want to look at debt as a percentage of our full state valuation because that's one of the metrics that um, the rating agencies want, and it also gives us a sense of, of what we can handle for debt. So you'll see that the blue bars represent the main state revenue services um, full state valuation for our town. And the orange line coming across is our total debt as a percentage of that full state valuation. Mm -hmm. And neither of these numbers have been adjusted for inflation, so that orange line is correct, right? Because we're comparing apples to apple dollars, $2,000 yeah. to $2,000. So total debt in the early years exceeded the valuation, is that what it is? No, because we're reading, um, I was worried about that, yeah, so uh, we're reading the orange line from the right axis, and they're com they could be totally oh, separate graphs, oh, gotcha, okay, gotcha. and uh, please uh, also uh, note uh, that your left axis is in millions, okay, so yeah. that 3,850 is actually 3 billion, 850 million, um, and also that your, right, your left axis doesn't start till 3 billion, 300 million, so these peaks and valleys are not nearly as large as they might first look. If I, were to, if I were to make this graph with a zero axis, you would basically see no see movement. Mm -hmm. Okay? Just a, a is, go ahead, Chuck, please. What, what is, um, and I, uh, I'm assuming that maybe the data wasn't because of the, you're relying on state information. Um, what is our percentage today? I can't give that to you. So the, the well, state valuation is, um, is a two-year lag period. So that 2014 is the most recent data I have from the state, and if we were t and using our town's assessment data is not is is certainly not what the rating agencies would use. Because sure. So from a, I understand from a quality perspective, didn't uh, Moody's provide us with that uh, when they upgraded us? That because uh, where it is one of theirs. The reason why I'm asking, I'm just curious, because um, in 2016, we did have an increase in our Moody's rating. Mm -hmm. I think and it was SP. Huh? I think it was SP, that Moody's. Well, maybe, well, they both actually gave us an upgrade, but, um, but, but my, I was, it would be curious to see where we are, because if it's higher and our rating went up, <coughs> it makes me kind of wonder why that percentage is higher. Well, I think and, and our rating still went up, but I think as or our valuation went down. as our valuation increases, our ability to absorb debt increases, and that's probably what they look at, right? Our debt to that's our debt to valuation. To in my on, we haven't taken on significant right. additional yeah. debt since '14, so I would expect that trend line to continue in that path. So right. I don't think it's risen. In fact, I would expect it to, to have gone down slightly. And obviously, in this chart, you see that jump starting in '11 and, and climbing oh, yeah. in terms of debt. I think um, the reason for our Increase was due to our increase in our fund balance. Inter increase in rating is what you said. Yes, the increase in the rating was due to the fund it, balance. And obviously, the, the beauty of this graphical display, uh, there's some shortcomings, but it also demonstrates that we are on a very positive path in terms of total valuation, and that that's a, a real important <coughs> factor for uh, certainly the agencies, but for us, it, it speaks right. to our ability to cover this debt. And a nice that's thing, really yeah, a nice thing really to see good. is also the full rebound from 08. 
So um, by 2013, we had not only fully recovered in the eyes of the state, but had, and by 2014, we're well above. So definitely heading in the right direction. And it will be very interesting to see where we land. Your statement, the recession is over? Is that your statement? Absolutely not. I neither <laughs> confirm nor deny that statement. Um, I'm sure for some it feels very much like it is continuing. Can, can you, just as a sidebar, though. State Do you want me to go back? Yeah, just, have we looked at it? How close is a stateful evaluation to what we assess? Are they, are they I have not looked at it. fairly close, isn't it? Uh, it, it will vary year to year, but generally speaking, our values are some of the better ones in the state in terms of uh, reflective of full value. The state valuation is an important uh, procedure the state goes through to equalize everyone's value. Uh, Matt Sturgis, the town assessor, was telling us that the town of Palomo, for instance, uh, was some 30% of value. Uh, mm -hmm. for residential properties. And that was really a conscious effort on their part. Mm -hmm. What the state does, because so many very important funding formulas like aid education are based on valuation, they equalize it. So they will adjust it upward, they look at sales, and they identify through a ratio analysis how far <coughs> their committed values are to fair market value uh, and make an, adju an adjustment. Mm -hmm. We're consistently uh, well above 90%, from <coughs> close to 100%. Um, and that uh, there's an annual quality rating that Maine Revenue Service does uh, for each town in the state. Okay. Great job. Thanks. So um, now we're going to look at, so here's your table. Okay, so we're looking at total general fund expenditure, municipal debt service, school debt service, total debt service, and debt service payments as a percentage of that annual expenditure. Okay, so those are your data points. I've sourced them for you. If you want to verify them for yourselves, underneath each table, you can find where in the audit or where um, in government documents I have found this, the information. So these are coming to us from um, audits, all of them from Exhibit A2 or Statement 6, depending on the data point. So this is our debt service. Um, municipal debt service is blue bars. Uh, orange bars are school debt service. Gray is total. And with that right-hand axis, you're reading debt service payments as a percentage of annual expenditure. Uh, we see a downward trend. That's a mm -hmm. positive thing. We want to see that. I uh, want to highlight that even though um, in the above graph, the school debt total held is significantly higher than the municipal debt held, we do pay higher levels of debt service on municipal debt than we do on school debt because it's for shorter periods of time. We pay a higher we pay it back more quickly. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't. I thought the debt was non-distinguishable. I thought we issued bonds based on municipal, and it's all. I didn't realize there were. We I mean, know we have Wentworth bonds specific for a project, but I thought that the town debt is the town debt is the town debt that we don't have. In terms of obligation to pay, that's true. But we track them separately, certainly, and they're reflected separately in in our budgets, respective budgets. And there are different risk forwards for the interest. Is that what? Um, uh, no, not uh, not necessarily. Maybe that's what I'm getting concerned about. Is that there? It, it's just a question of where the the. It's not necessarily a separate funding account or separate bonds for schools, separate yeah, for municipal. Right. It's total bonds. Right. We but it just we track. It's our internal accounting of what percentage was used for school, what Correct. percentage was used for municipal. And and this so is showing annual debt service costs, not total debt service that we have on the books. This is annual debt service costs. And so on an annual basis in the operating budget, school and town debt is reflected um, accordingly. Okay. okay. Is, is a little bit of a dip in 2016, is that, is that the Wentworth piece that's in there? Um, or is it, did it really go down? I think we did some refunding well, they, in the payment schedules that came up. Some of them um, might have missed the year before we started again in um, principal. Didn't the middle school also retire? That that yes, fully retire, did. I think. Yeah. yeah, you're right. So uh, part yeah. of the refunding, I think. Yeah. 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 There's all sorts of little anomalies. This is just interesting seeing that um, mm -hmm. those the town debt because of really the term of our financing, we end up paying far more in principal and less in interest because it's shorter term, but it ends up impacting in annual debt service cost. Uh, that's where you see it. We're, we're paying it down quicker. Um. Are we ready to move forward? So another one of the ways that we want to just make sure that we're being healthy um, is that we have a highly diversified tax base. 
and we don't want to be concentrating. Um, we're fortunate that we are not reliant on a mill, for instance. We don't want to be concentrating our taxes in one basket. So this is, this is using um, our assessing office data for the top tax assessment for the top 10 taxpayers, and then using Maine State Revenue Service as that full town valuation. So um, again, you're going to use the, the blue bars are the total tax assessments for the top 10 taxpayers in Scarborough, and the um, orange line across reads with the right-hand axis, and that is the top 10 taxpayer assessments as a percentage of the full town valuation. <coughs> is that an indication that we have larger tax bases, larger, how can I say this? We have a, a similar number of companies paying a larger percentage or that our, uh, what's the takeaway from that, that trend, I guess? Is well, you see in this 10 or 11 year analysis, uh, it's gone from two, roughly speaking, 200 million to 300 million. Right. So. Uh, I can tell you Piper Shores has come online in that time. They're $62 million alone. Right. But uh, tips are rolled into the, Will tips make a big impact in this at all? They're not reflected in that data, no. Because this is actual, this is actual tax, tax revenue received, it's correct? Actually, it's actually, uh, no, value. Property value. Property value. It's valuation. Valuation. Okay. So On so this axis here. Okay. The combined value of the top 10 taxpayers okay. is $300 million. Okay. So that's not necessarily revenue create collective no, the valuation. No, but there'll be a correlation there. Obviously, sure. you'll see it. Yeah. Um, also, please note that this is one of the things that you had in your yellow balloon um, highlights. And just as a reminder, that it's, we're considered to have a very diverse tax um, base if that percentage line is below 15%, right. we're at 8%. Right. So we are doing very well as far as um, our rating agencies are concerned with our diversity. Yeah, keep in mind some towns, mill towns, they're 60 to 70 percent reliant on a single taxpayer. And so any little hiccup with that taxpayer can be a disaster. So um, we're back to the audit statements three and six, and we're looking at total general fund revenue, um, unrestricted. That's, so please remember unrestricted is not total. Okay, so unrestricted municipal fund balance, unrestricted school fund balance, total unrestricted, um, and then we have the um, unrestricted fund balance as percent of revenues, unrestricted fund balance as a percent of expenditures, and you'll see this chart down here. This is something that we want to see trending upwards, so we're doing a nice job with that. You want me to go? Along? I just went to the table again. No, up. Sorry. Oh. The table again. I can't Thank get you. both the graph and the table fully at the same okay. time. No, that's okay. Good I enough. just wanted to see the right side, the right column for the. Yeah, so. Um, these, this is a positive graph. Everyone should be congratulating themselves on a job well done. These are numbers that we'd like to see going upward, um, and we are seeing that percentage increasing. Yeah, we're not sure what's more important as a percentage of revenues or expenditures, but the rating agencies look at them both. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a, yeah. I don't have an opinion yeah. as to which one is more instructive. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. But to your point of uh, bond rating, I, there's there's no doubt that that this occurrence shown over a consistent period of time yeah. uh, contributed to the upgrade. Yeah. Because it's the second year in a row. When do we think the upgrade stages? 100,000? Oh boy. It's so many basis points per... Yeah, we changed we changed whole categories just for S&P, I thought, though, right? It depends so we go on to what you're borrowing, year. of course, but yeah. I, I think you're right. It was in the order of 100,000 on, on, yeah. on that bond issue um, where it was affected. And then our final worksheet that we have for you is, um, so this is Moody's sends out um, a very nice booklet of their medians. So what that means is that for their AAA, AA, what you see up there, if you take all of the towns that Moody's has assigned, let's use AA because that's where we fall. If you take all of the communities, and this is for communities that are under 50,000 people, all of them that have been assigned that AA rating, these are the median value for each of these measurements that they're looking at. So total general fund revenues, um, that I've highlighted the AAA. We current, the town of Scarborough is all the way to the right to show you where we are currently. Um, again, that number, that first line is in thousands. So um, you can adjust that as you wish. So I, one of the things I, I actually thought about this further, Tom, and I didn't have a chance to chat with you. Do you want me to explain why we are different on that next line? On fund balance? So that general fund balance is percent of revenues. Tom and I were trying to figure out why we would be at, what sort of town would be at 45%? Percent. 
And then it occurred to me, look at the difference in total general fund revenue. So that's our divisor, right? So it's, it's fund balance as a percent of revenues. We're taking fund balance and we're dividing it by revenues. Well, ours are at 77 million. The median town for AA is at 17 million. So we would expect to see, I mean, their fund balances mm. still can't drop too far below or they're not going to be able to pay their bills in time. So that explains why they have a much higher percentage than we do. It's not a point of, I don't think, alarm. No, but if that's the case, why wouldn't we automatically be in the AAA because we've got all this, we've got uh, such a factors. greater We revenue. can talk about that as we go yeah. down. There are other okay. factors. Okay. Well, remember, uh, typically in the way we measure fund balance is a percentage of um, your operating budget, essentially, as opposed to this metric is percentage of revenues. So the risk is points well taken. Um, I, I, we might want to produce some other metrics that are, that are better apples to apples comparisons. Now, this is just Moody's. What? You're sure. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. What is the um, total full value? What does that represent? That's the total full valuation of the town. 2.7 billion. 2.8 okay. billion. I can't see the numbers. Okay. So, um, so as we're going down, available. Do you want me to make that a little larger? I can. No, no. Sorry. These are. Uh, sorry, uh, Larissa. Oh, these are go. Moody's. This is nationwide, correct? Yes. Um, it'd be interesting. I to see geographically perhaps if there's, a, if there's another sector, let's say the southeast or southwest, where a lot of their AAA yep. rated places are. So you know looking I mean? at this, uh, if you take general fund revenues, roughly we're twice as large as the median. But our valuation, but our valuation is, is two-thirds of the median. Right. So okay. these are smaller communities, arguably. Higher value. Well, that's why I asked. This, you know, it could be Connecticut, <laughs> you know, or or Mid Atlantic or Coastal something. Coastal California. Yeah. I, I don't know. Right. It might be just more geographically driven than right. necessarily performance metrics. Or I'm not saying that we don't want to be in the top, but <coughs> the factors might be beyond our control. Is what I'm trying to say. Too, you know. So we're hugging close. We're um, moving down to overall debt burden as a percentage of full yeah. value. So we're at 2.4 percent. The median for AA is 2.2. For the total full valuation, we are certainly more in keeping with the AAA bonding um, label, but we are well above the AA. Um, Population-wise, we have not yet broken into that AAA. That might be something else that maybe, and I'm not, you know, as population gets bigger, is that something that they appreciate and they think that is a better way to spread the, the cost? Mm -hmm. um, and our full valuation per capita is certainly far higher than the median AA. Um, and that uh, top 10 taxpayers that we just looked at in the previous graph, um, we're doing very well there and, and hugging that AAA figure nicely. Yeah, our advisor uh, is, is said the leap from here to here is tremendous. <laughs> but, but we should know what, that requi what it requires, and I think I mean the rating leap. Yeah. The rating leap is, is huge. So do, you have to, do we have to, does our agent have to lobby for that change? Meaning, we might call it that. Well, because I'm looking at the numbers going. I mean, do we just sit back and wait for them to say, you know, we think you're okay, or, or could we make a, a, an argument saying, look at our numbers compared to the median double A, why wouldn't we be in a lower triple A tier, let's say? Well, there's an interesting conversation. The analysts, these are really smart people. They are, they are, they're sifting through data, and but that doesn't tell the full story. So there's a qualitative oh, piece to it, and there's a relationship that our advisor has with the analyst that's certainly to our benefit. So there's a little bit of cajoling and negotiation. It's the qualitative piece that have you considered this or, or what have you. And there's all sorts of other differences state by state. Um, sure. Things that Augusta does has effect on us that, um, or, and vice versa. Well, absolutely. I, I'd be curious, are, are there any AAA rated municipalities in the state of Maine? Yes. How many? Just, I mean, I, no, there I aren't many. I'm just, just ballparking. There I mean, aren't three many. Three or four, are we talking? No, so I don't think we have that many even. But um, we did, the town of Scarborough did go to New York to meet with Moody's uh, in, I don't know, 80s or 90s, yep. to try and up our rating at that point in time. I think yep. we were like an A1 at that point. And they didn't give us the rating because they still considered us to be essentially a bedroom community of Portland. Sure. Uh, because they also said the economy really figures into the economics of the town. Right, right. Figure into it. Uh, so. And that, that makes sense, but as we diversify our tax base and as, we diver as our population increases, we, 
we tend to be a little bit more self-sufficient. And those numbers, if I'm looking at it just from our snapshot, right. we're, we certainly have the ability to take on a lot more debt comfortably um, in their minds. I'm not saying we should, but you know, the numbers would indicate that we're a very stable investment. We're, we're not as volatile as maybe some of the other communities might be. And then when we speak to the rating agencies, we, when we go out to bond, we have a phone discussion with them. Right. And uh, the advisor makes a pitch we make a pitch, and, yeah. and we actually made a pitch with Standard and Poor's and said, you know, hey, yeah. everything is trending the right way, right. and uh, they agreed with that, so so that was good. Do we know, I mean, but the problem becomes it might be, I mean, we look good in every metric, except for lines five yeah. and six. Um, except for the debt. And, and debt, but five and six, were we at that level with those numbers consistent with when they increased our rating? We have these, the, the numbers that are on the right hand side. Is that consistent about when they increased our rating? It felt like so I'm more concerned about what's our risk of it going back to it. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if the answer to me, but I think that's where they get into the qualitative assessment of the town because you look at fiscal policy, you look at management, yeah. Yeah. you look at the decisions that the council make because you can go from one council to the next, and that entire fund balance could be depleted in one year. Yeah. Right. Could so, be, so to Chris's point about why aren't we in the AAA, it's because you have to be able to show that you're going to be able to stabilize and stay in that rating and not be volatile and go and change from year over year. Um, and that's where the fiscal policy, I think, comes into place where we're starting to do a better job at it. For yeah, yeah. And I'm just suggesting. I mean, I, like anything, you gotta you gotta advocate for yourself from time to time. And I don't know if that's something that we take up with the with the bond agent, you know, for the next oh. cycle and say, you know, this is a great analysis. Um, you know, uh, I, realizing it's nation nationwide, um, but if if we can, you know, you, the the old saying in sales is the hungry dog eats. If you don't if you don't make that pitch, they they may be happy we, to chug along. You know, we we advocate as strong as we can, and I encourage any member of the committee to sit through on those rating calls. They're the intense conversation. Yeah. When are we, when's the next? We, try, we were going to do it last year. And Typically in April, March, April is when we bond. Can you make sure, please, ahead of time that we know well in advance yeah. when those are? Yeah. I, I think we missed it last time for by a, a week or something like that. I think, I think they actually Bill Donovan sat in his chair last year. He was interested and sat in. Um, I was just looking for Moody's rating. Uh, the only AAA that I'm aware of in, in uh, Maine is South Portland. Is that, Not for Moody's. That's the last, that's what I got. That's, that's, a lot. Is, that's great. That's a lot. And the interesting thing would be, Tom, is to look at the same, th if we could find a way to pull their numbers from, you know, to, to look at that and, and, you know, maybe that would help make the case. Maybe it's just they're more stable because of the mall and the commercial, long-term commercial or, And I think that's, I don't know. Uh, the sands are shifting, frankly, with right. retail. Right. Um, I don't think it's as solid as it used to be. Right. I can uh, certainly speak to Josh. Can sure. Hold on. And I think fund balance is a big part of their rating, frankly. Sure. So is that a good first start? That's a great guess, start. Um, we're pleased to share this electronically or, or uh, paper yep. copies, whatever you prefer, and we'd love to have you spend some time um, looking at further and, and maybe come back and ask us further questions. Uh, Larissa has thought about this long enough that she has some further kind of analysis and maybe interpretation, but that's probably a conversation where many of us need to be part of just to kind of round it out. Um, so what do you, yeah, what do you think? What do you guys well, think? I, I mean, I, I personally, I think the data is strong. I think it's 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 solid, sound data. The real question is, is, is you know, when do we normalize? When do we adjust for inflation? When do we not? Um, what does that mean? And then, and then really what takeaways do we want to get from this data? Do we want to focus on you know, a certain, you know, three or four key indicators and say that's what we really want to be looking at benchmarking against? Do we want to use a whole sheet of them, a whole list of them? I think it strikes me as once the data's in place, plugging it in from year to year I think would be fairly easy, I, I, I would think. Um, she's done all the heavy lifting already. <laughs> well, I mean, do we want, you know, to get the tongue's point of, you send it to us electronically. Yeah. Before the next meeting, can you guys maybe take a look and see which ones really resonate with you? Because I think that leads to where, Sean, you were trying to go, some dashboards we can, or metrics that we can start to kind of key on. Does that, does that make yeah. any sense? Yeah. Um, so what I would uh, like to see, uh, by the way, uh, Ms. Crockett, that's awesome Thanks. work. Yeah, that's that's absolutely work. incredible work. Um, <clears throat> The key issue for me is um, it gets to that qualitative discussion. So for each one of these, I'd like to maybe understand your recommendation on how that can be used in the conversation. 
around long-range planning, both from a fiscal policy perspective, because one of the things that really needs to be done is that the fiscal policy, I think it's policy 101, it's the very first policy that's in all of our policies, is a, I think it's called fiscal policy, fiscal policy and debt management. So, you know, how can we use that data that you just presented on a trend basis um, in, in setting some policies and long-range goals so that we can get into a three, five-year kind of business planning uh, perspective? Um, so, you know, I, I think you need to, uh, as part of this, um, in order to educate everyone, because not everyone is as, um, their financial acumen might not be as great, is to provide definitions to the document and how they're calculated. And then how is it useful um, in setting policy or useful in understanding the trend line? Yeah, the other part of the conversation is if these metrics are ones we're interested in is establishing some indicators. If we get above 3% right, right. of this or that, then a flag waves and we have a, a, dashboard. We have a checkpoint. Sure. Sure. We get together. Well, that, that, so that brings the question of how many gauges do we want on this dashboard? Do we want a cockpit or do we want you know, <laughs> uh, uh, oil pressure, you know, <laughs> temperature and speed? Sure. So, so what I'm used to is getting the cockpit um, review, kind of mm -hmm. everything, yep. as supplemental data, but then concentrating on what are the four pieces, five pieces, whatever your goals are being set, what are the primary measures mm -hmm. for that? Because, you, you know, you always want to see, it's nice to know the, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of that little detail, but I think the executive summary should be one or two pages with, or whatever, um, you have your trend and you have your conversation that goes along with it. You know, here's your goal. And here's the trend, and personally, I have no problem with staff providing an opinion about that regarding yeah. our goals. That's why they get paid the big bucks. Yeah. Uh, and then we take that advice into consideration when we set policy or direction. So, And I guess the only place I'd be specifically this year for the budget process would be some sensitivity to any of the things that have to do with fund balance. Because I got a feeling that that was always been part of our conversation as we think about how much of the reserves do we use or don't use or what are the consequences yep. to take a little bit of time to try to better understand those fund balances and some of the percentages and metrics that you had, where are sort of the danger zones of not digging too deeply into the, the reserves and an impact on the bond rating and other things. So that, that would be kind of a helpful tool to at least have some more definition around. So I, I guess my, my question would be to, to Ms. Crockett, um, based on the the uh, in-depth research and stuff that you've done, would you say we're in a fairly healthy situation? Um, generally healthy, um, you know, um, I, I guess where I'm looking for is I, I want to make sure, you know, every year we get into the budget discussions and it's, it's one or two or three indicators that people start to panic about, whether it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's total debt load or it's percentage of debt over revenue or something along those mm -hmm. lines. And I think part of what we can take away from this discussion too is not necessarily that we um, you know, we don't want to be aware of those things, but, you know, the, the state of the municipality is very, very strong, <laughs> you know, and that we've been managed very well up until this point. So while those are concerns that we haven't have to address, it's not like, you know, if we don't, if we don't act this year and put the brakes on everything, we, we tend to be a little bit, how can I say this, we tend to be a little bit um, concerned, I guess, maybe about things without knowing the full impact. And hopefully this will give us a better, bigger picture to be able to come back and say, when we put the budget together for the year, to say, okay, you know, listen, we've, you know, we, 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 we maybe we can dip a little bit into the, right. if we need to, if we come to that decision as a group, we could dip into fund balance a little bit because all of these other factors in line will impact this way. You know what I mean? And not be like, can't touch fund balance because that's saved for a rainy day and we talked about percentage reserves and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think I mean, it would be great if it came out of sort of the staff recommendation about here's, here's sort of a danger zone. Sure. And, here, and here's sort of a safe zone, that, that sort of like we were doing with the property valuation. Here's sort of a range. Yep. Yep. Probably if we stay within this range, we can satisfy those concerns, but it's not going to have a longer-term impact. Mm -hmm. But here's a real red line you may not want to cross. That, that would just be really helpful to frame that conversation. Right. And so, so we want to have three or four indicators that we say, you know, here are the, here are the ones, whether it's, let's say, it's debt service. You know, um, do we want to say debt service is one of our our four big gauges that we're looking at um, when we're in that, we, if we start hitting the red line in there, um, then we'll go down to what does, why is that a danger? And then we get into debt service and how that trails into some of the other metrics type of thing. Or do you want to kind of get everything together, I guess you will, and kind of try and interpret through, you know, interpret every, all of the, all of the data that's coming through. You know, pick all of the 10, 15 indicators or, or different ones that we had and go, okay, this is important because of X. 
or do we want to whittle it down and say, here are the four major big things that we're looking at? Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, and Sean, I think if, if I heard you right, you were saying, you know, we should have, you know, many metrics maybe, but to have kind of an executive summary of some key ones right. that we're going to focus on. So I look at the dashboard that Ms. Crockett created as being the executive dashboard, which would be the overall public community as a whole. Um, and then each one of those, just like Moody's and S&P, when they give our rating, they give you both uh, positives and negatives or pros and cons or whatever their terminology and I think the staff could do the same thing okay. and so here are your highlights and here are your concerns or whatever you want to uh, label that as. Um, I think this is a great starting point because that's what we really should be focusing on but I think that as we um, become more aware of this dashboard then there should be sub dashboards that break out programs so that we can then talk about priorities, prioritization of those programs um, because then that becomes the supplemental information. So, uh, you know, I'm looking at this from a steps perspective. This is a great global community-wide start, and I think that we should finish that um, with a narrative piece, and then maybe the next go around is yeah. the getting at the programmatic level. You know, and when I say programmatic, I'm talking about community services versus public safety, or, or at least um, maybe fire services versus police services, you know, breaking down those departmental groupings. So um, so I just want to make sure that our actions coming out of this is we're going to look at this data. Um, are we going to make a recommendation for what we want those top four to be for the executive summary? And, uh, or we want to just wait for the interpretations to come back, look at them, and, and, and then go through it? Or we want to just leave everything the way it is now and just have descriptive uh, discussions behind each one of them? I would like to see um, the presentation broken down um, exactly the way it is with a narrative to each one of the graphs and charts and metrics where it explains the, um, how, um, how it should be used. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that um, ICMA document, you know, the book. If you looked at the book, that, um, it gave you the calculation and then it said, here's how you should interpret it and here's how you might use it. So once so we some, get to the, some commentary, that, that, some would commentary that would let us understand, you know, that part of it and then after we get that and we agree to you know, their recommendation with those, then we set policy or then we start talking about what are our directions going yeah. forward. Okay. I agree with that. Yeah, I just I mean, want to clarify. I mean, I, I remember in that document there were some 50 or 60 financial condition yeah, indicators. And right. That's um, like, yeah, I wanted all of them. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did too, but I wish I... Job guaranteed. <laughs> no, well, listen, I, and again, I, I, I don't think it's not, and I don't, I don't want to imply that none, any one of them are, are less important than the other. I think they're all part of the big picture, and I think it's great for us as, as the finance committee to have access to all that and probably a little more too. I'm just thinking in terms of the interpretive aspect out to the, to the populace. We've talked about that before, where you start with the 50,000 foot view and we start whittling down, and all that data is there and available if you want to get into the weeds, but you know how many how many how many how many people coming out of a discussion like this are going to look at 75 different metrics right. and, and and or do we want to once we get that description filter it down to three or four or five yes. basic ones where we say here are the big ones we maybe we put that into the the budget presentation then if those generate questions we can then start getting down into the weeds a little bit more with some of the other metrics but I think it's good for us to have them. Um, it's what we talked about before about trying, trying to simplify some of our right. reporting structures yeah. and, and how we get that information out there. So are you guys clear as mud about this? I know I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we want everything that we want and nothing that we don't. How about that? Um, so, so, not a so if I could suggest, so, uh, so communicating what we're doing is extremely important because there's really two levels of communication. The first is that um, while we can be okay with it because we have the acumen for it, um, we need to involve the other four members yep. at one level because yep. we need to bring them up to the same level or as close as possible. And then there is also the dissemination and communication to the public, which can be part of the budget as part of our annual, you know, audited statements. As part, you know, there's different opportunities. So um, if you can think about or, you know, maybe how do we engage the, the other four council members first and then, you know, there's this nice smooth transition so that this becomes a standard product or a standard document for us to have. Mm -hmm. So, so if I summarize, and I think yep. for next meeting, if possible, or whenever <laughs> it works in your schedule, um, I think Sean's request was of the work that you've done, which is great. Just do a little bit more of a narrative for mm -hmm. us, and you know, tell us what it's telling us, so we, we can understand it and we can ponder that. Maybe sure. so, get that to us whenever, and then maybe of that, then you know, maybe you're, all of you can sit. And what are the ones that are going to really impact us from either a rating point of view or other things and 
those may help inform us or what would your recommendation be for the ones that we should really kind of you know put at the top of a top of the gauge of the cockpit or whatever it is like if it's a plane it's altitude that might be pretty important and whatever. airspeed airspeed yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in, then we'll take your recommendation then Sean I think to get to your point if we agree then then I think you're absolutely right and then we need to talk about how do we bring it back to the council and whether there's a workshop or a presentation or something to figure that out and then how do we get it out to the public does that that's Absolutely. That's yep. Okay. Yep. The other piece that we'd like to study more and report, uh, it has to do with both demographic and financial metrics, is getting a better sense of ability to pay. Yeah. It's kind of the outward piece. Um, yeah. We've sent some strain uh, in thinking from the taxpayer perspective, just well, getting data, a sense. That uh, data oh. seemed to suggest kind of a flattening of. Well, that would be well, important to know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It yeah. Speaks yeah. To yeah. Well, and that's where the supporting information or the supporting metrics comes in because every one of those um, metrics, you could take a portion of it and, and argue that um, while it might be good overall, um, there's influences in there that could make it negative. Sure. Because, you know, um, as we've always said, um, data, the same data can be interpreted by um, two different people, two sure. definitely different ways. Um, they could take a very positive message that this gave and say that it's actually unhealthy. As an example, the issue around debt per capita, or I'm sorry, debt per value or debt per expenditure. You know, so there's different negative aspects to it. That that's why, to me, I'd rather have all 60 metrics just as a supporting piece, but only talk about maybe five. So I'm I'm wondering if one of the ways to look at the ability to pay would be, um, you know, um, uh, people who have not paid their property taxes, what the default rate is, let's say, or the the non-payment rate is on yeah, property so taxes. Household income. I mean, there's any number of things yeah. you can right, uh, right. triangulate I, you know, back to that point. With. Right. I mean, uh, that might be an aspect sure. of it as well. I mean, you know, it, to me, it's always a question of um, what what you that's want to good. versus what you can. <laughs> Well, you know, we, but that's a gr that's a great metric because that could drive a policy conversation around. Um, and I don't know the title for, it, but like, the, what is it? The town of York has this policy regarding educational tax, in which they do a um, some type of lien program where that you don't pay it; they just place a lien on your property. They collect it eventually when it gets sold. There's some type of program like that up there. So I mean, but that you know, default rates yeah. and other issues. But, but remember, drive household, those policy conversations. household income or default rate on property tax is one thing. But what if, uh, if at the same time we're growing our commercial industrial portions of our tax base, um, is getting a, hard, a bigger piece of the pie? Sure. Those metrics don't really equate um, mm -hmm. in that analysis. So there's a number of different pieces yeah. that need to come into yeah. the equation. Sure. But I also think, I mean, you know, that ties into the, to the uh, property tax relief program we have as well. If we start seeing more and more and more requests for additional funding on that program as well, I think that's a good indicator for us to, to be aware. Uh, yeah. You know, that could be a flag that, that causes us to say, okay, you know. Yeah, and that's a good safety net for those that are most Correct. vulnerable. Correct. Um, Larissa, did you have a question I for do. clarity? I think that one of the things that I also um, would want to hear from Council is which of the um, kind of metrics indicators that we looked at are you interested in comparing to the neighboring communities? Because some of them make sense to judge our success based on our, our peers, and some of them really don't. They really are internal. Um, sure. And so I think that that would be something I would want to get feedback from you about where do you want to compare yourself to your neighbors, and where are you more interested in, in keeping so, your focus? So in I have an opinion. Well, I, but I mean, do we want to turn that around and say we would welcome your recommendation first to set to tell us what you think is appropriate and 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 would be easy? Um, because I, I mean, I, I have I have a, I have an opinion as well, but I mean, we may there may be other things that yeah, you, you think is better. I was going to yeah maybe for the next time just come back to what you yeah. you would suggest is easy to get and meaningful. Right. right. And again, I think in Sean and. When we started this process last year, our, our pro, our, I think our this is going to be kind of a work in progress, right? Yep. I mean, we, we wanted to kind of put our toes in the water and get some metrics and understand this will be an evolving process, we hope. So it doesn't have to be perfect out of the gate. So I think you've given us a lot of good material to work with. It's a great start. Um, so to answer your question, I think, yeah, tell us what you think we should measure next to our peer groups. and. We'll go from there, I guess, with that. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think even coming out of the, we said the Moody's, obviously the Moody's data, um, I think that's, if that's easily acquirable, I mean, we don't, you don't want to make it into a, you know, a, a PhD thesis research project or anything, but. Um, well, if, 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 audit report. Yeah, yeah, so, so, I mean, I, you know, obviously if we're talking about where we're trending from, from the rating agency perspective, I think that's pretty straightforward and easy, and then 
the other ones I, I'll, I'll defer to recommendations and see where we land. Sure. Um, so how do I say this the right way? Um, I would prefer to see an analysis. So one, you need, to be, you need to come to an agreement on defining the peer group. So we already went through this exercise once with the school department uh, regarding schools. So um, we need to determine if that peer group is appropriate for the community as a whole, which personally I think it is. However, um, I have never been a fan of taking Scarborough and comparing against another community one-on-one. -on -one. And that's because every community is different. Populations aren't exactly the same. The makeup of your community is not the same. The services you provide aren't the same. How you account for those services in your budget isn't the same. So nothing is, you know, every community is a snowflake, right, for a bad analogy. Um, but I think using a median average of what that peer group is and comparing us to that median is, a, for me, a better analysis. Or per capita takes into account that, and, and I assure yeah, you, I'm just the, the effort that they're putting forth right now is to equalize that data to make sure that right. Public Works and Cape Elizabeth and South Portland and True. Falmouth are, yeah, right. and, and Scarborough are all right. equalized as best we can, yeah. can at this point. And, and, and the reason why Scarborough is Scarborough, we are not South Portland, we are not Cape Elizabeth, and comparing to either one of them is not, a, to me, an appropriate comparison. Mm -hmm. We are unique, and the information should be used simply as a reference point and not a tool for setting policy because we should be setting policy on what our goals are and what our long-range vision is for the community. So I would concur to some level, but not all of it. Yeah. <laughs> I think trending is important. I think it's we are a community. We're, we're a region. We're a geography. I think it's important to to understand trending analysis where we're well, at. I, I, don't, I don't necessarily think we should be basing policy off of other municipalities, but you know, if they're doing something better uh, or more, more efficiently than we are, then, then yeah, we benchmark it, exactly. Town of Falmouth exactly. is reserving, what, 20, 25 percent? Why on earth would we take that much money from our citizens? Yeah. Well, yeah, right, but I mean, at least if we know that, we can, that's maybe, the, where the discussion goes. Yeah. Maybe the value of that exercise, for me anyway, is that it, there's an indicator. That right. Why are we the, an anomaly here? And right. it just causes you to dig a little deeper and want to know what, what are the differences. And it may not lead to any policy change, it may, right. you know, uh, but, it, but it may well. I think it's a fair assessment that we're, we're doing, relatively speaking, we're doing fairly well as a community. I mean, we, oh, we, we're probably performing a little better than uh, maybe Falmouth or Yarmouth or Cumberland from a financial perspective. So we don't necessarily want to mimic them. It's more of a question of, you know, when we get the question, uh, I think, from the public of what are we doing and why, you know, it's, it's, more, it's not a necessarily justification, but it's another data set you can look back and say, listen, we're doing it this way. Um, uh, this is how we're doing it in Scarborough, and Scarborough is unique in many ways, but you know, compared to the region, we're, we're, we're doing okay, you know. Um, but if I think, if we can leave it with, take a look at it, yeah. come back with what, what you would recommend are meaningful, with, with the conversation you've heard, yeah. what are some meaningful metrics that we can compare that should at least be on our radar screen? Okay. That would be really helpful, yeah. and it probably has something to do with, you know, debt, and, because at least, if nothing else, we need to probably answer that question to our well, with the, and others, so. the debt, though, as Thomas pointed out a couple of times, Scarborough might actually be better off by having that higher level of debt because none of the maintenance has been postponed, and we were able to take advantage of historically low interest rates and, and lock right. in and, and keep up to date with the infrastructure and things that needed to happen, whereas some of our neighboring communities that are going to show far lower debt yeah. per capita are going to be punished for that later because right. they're going to need to repair roads or build schools. Right, right. But I, I agree with Sean, I think. Well, I think would be important that, that there's a narrative that has to go with it. Mm -hmm. But being able to show that and then explain yeah. in a yeah. narrative, right. you do two things. One, people that want to look at that number with no narrative are going to form conclusions. At least if you put it out there and you have the narrative, I mean, that's a great yeah. Yeah. narrative you just gave an explanation. Right. So, and again, these are just starting points for us to be able to tell a story. And it gets to Sean's point, right. there's going to be a total commitment by the council, we hope, this year to really do a much better job with all communication. So right. all of this kind of rolls in together and be much more transparent and open and let people see and understand the information. So I think with that, Guy, you guys good? Well, good yeah, way. I mean, I just, just I Very do good. like Tom's uh, comment, though, yeah. about ability to pay. And if there were yeah. some metrics yeah. or parameters yeah. we could look yeah. at yeah. and look around those, I think those would be good to add yeah. um, yeah. and discuss that as well, because I, I think that's another, that's one aspect I think that we didn't necessarily, I mean, we can allude yeah. to that, yeah. but something a little stronger there. So yeah. that's all. That's on our, uh, on our list of things yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.
come great back. Great work. Around. Thank you. That was great. Glad you liked it. You did a lot of that. That took a lot of time. That's well, great. also shout out to Ruth though for really helping me learn how to read our audits in an efficient manner and find <laughs> awesome. the data I needed. When you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, I need that course too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Good discussion item number eight. There really isn't, you know, the, Tom and I, we attended sort of a, a preliminary meeting, and I think, you know, John, it builds right off of what you said earlier. I think everybody in the room was in agreement that, you know, the process that's been put in place is a great process. Pretty much follow that same process. Um, there were some additional thoughts, and again, a lot of these things will be discussed at the first meeting. It was kind of coming up with an agenda, and it was really same type of thing. Just work, you know, the glossary of terms. Yep. We're not going to redo that. <laughs> but Thank just you. Check, just check in. <laughs> and say, oh, here it is. We were <laughs> reminded by, uh, by Derry Shea that, Sean, you still owe a couple of definitions. <laughs> I'll Shocker. give you some definitions. <laughs> not re re so we're not going to retail that work <laughs> and, and just make sure everybody checks in. We're going to yeah. talk about, and I think the intent would be to talk about what worked really, really well. You know, if it, is, was there any part of the process that didn't work well and maybe we should tweak it? Um, I think there was some communication and some conversations around should we do a different way of the forum. But so anyways, this is going to be kind of an idea, share, kick it off, share the dates, kind of get on the same page and kick it off. And, I, um, and the only other thing that was discussed a little bit that might come up is kind of this joint interest and again kind of continuing the model of are there some shared service type things that we can do together, some things that were mentioned about you know, what about grant writing and what about communications? Because the, the Board of Education itself is saying they also are finding, edu you know, the communication like Facebook pages and other yep. things difficult. So seeing if there's some ways we can go down that pathway. Um, Tom, was there anything else that really came out of that that was... That was My big takeaway was that there was a, really a rich discussion um, really with Julie Kuchenberger's uh, yeah. input being brand new to the conversation around different ways to do the forum. There was universal opinion that that was a great thing to do, to, to make the effort, but we thought there might be another way to kind of uh, present the information differently and better received and, and in doing so get better participation. I think we only had 20 or 25 non-staff or elected officials at the last yeah. one. Yeah. Um, but there were a lot of, there were probably 50 questions. Some came before, some came that night, and that information was out there, and presumably people looked at that over the course of the budget process. So I, I think there's some opportunity, but um, generally speaking, the schedule really falls in line with what we've expected over the last uh, two or three years. And, uh, and this should be, we'd like to get this finalized at the first joint meeting, if possible, next week, 19th, I think it is. Yeah, 19th, yeah. yeah. Oh, so, yeah, and, and we did share, Sean, that that, I know you, thank you, committee, that that might work temporarily, but may not be a total solution, so that's something we can address, too, and go from there. But, but it, two o'clock, I mean, it's right in the middle of a business day. Sorry I work full time. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> yeah, but you work at home. <laughs> I can send you a sick note. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> might need that in triple <laughs> So is there anything else, guys, that you have on? I do. Yeah, if you don't mind. Um, so Tom and I had a chance to talk as chair of the full council. So we have, uh, and I was thinking about how to handle this. So we have a responsibility to share the audit outcome, um, the full audit outcome uh, for last year. And so the question is, um, given um, the challenge I've had just in scheduling um, other meetings, is really finding a time in which um, the uh, full school board as well as the full town council can get together to review that. So. Um, just a little bit of history, many years ago um, we started having those joint meetings because there were um, reportable items or things that needed to be focused in on and that was for both the town as well as for the school, very different management um, than it is today, very different message coming from the audit. The question I have for this committee is that, um, you know, I'd like to make it more efficient and, and, um, but, and useful um, in the sense that I was going to suggest that um, the audit actually be forwarded from the staff to the finance committee. The finance committee can um, either take that up by itself um, to make a recommendation or to um, have a joint meeting with the school board's finance committee, um, since we're already meeting in finance, make it an agenda item, to discuss the audit with the staff. And then if the two uh, feel that it's necessary to take it to the full council for a workshop rather than just simply um, Either I, I don't remember if we do it as an action item to accept the audit or if we just mm -hmm. simply receive it as part of, you know, as a report. Um, that way we only need to have, you know, the six of us kind of looking at that or, 
you know, what, what is it that you would like to do? It's just that getting 12 people, you know, and you got to think about everything that we're all doing. Everybody's on six different committees. Uh, and given the positive outcome of all of our audits, the question is, you know, I'm trying to make it a little more efficient yeah. and plausible. So I would have two, two questions. The yeah. first question would be, is there anything in rules and policy that, that dictates what we're doing and why we're doing it in terms of the audit report? That no, your charter requires down? the uh, production of an annual audit. Yep. Uh, the yep. auditor works for the town council and the yep. board of ed. Uh, they don't work for the staff. In right. fact, they, right. they're your eyes and ears to make sure and yep. check our work, essentially. Um, and there has to be an annual presentation of that audit. Right. Now, beyond that, I'm not aware of anything in writing. I think it's entirely possible if both bodies, the Council and Board of Education, are comfortable with their finance committees doing that on their behalf. And you could certainly invite the rest of the members to, to attend if they wished. Right. Um, I, I don't see any reason you couldn't do that if you wished. So that brings me to the start of the second point, uh, if I could just finish that. Um, I, I would be certainly in favor of doing that, but I'd, I'd, maybe that's something we present to the whole council and say, is everybody comfortable with that? Yeah. Um, and, and get the feedback from the other four councilors to say, you know, I, I think it's it's in our wheelhouse. It's something that should be done from finance anyway. But, you know, I wouldn't want to... I wanted to ask you first and yeah. then take yeah. it to the next meeting and, yeah. and use it as a... or make that recommendation to see what the feel is. Yeah. Um, the other piece is that I think that it's going to be important um, in order to uh, keep the same level of, uh, of uh, communication is that we publish the audit, um, you know, make it available online um, in it's advance of those meetings so that if people would like to review and have questions, mm -hmm. especially the management statements. It's already up online. It's already up, yeah. online. It's already up yeah. online? Okay. Yeah. But, you know, that gives them an opportunity. That way they can yeah. funnel questions through us as well. So. Or they can attend if they wish, but it's more of a... Yeah, they can, you know... And so then we can work with the school department to see if they want to do something similar. I suspect they'd be very receptive to a, uh, a more efficient way to, to accomplish that. And yeah. members beyond the finance committee, if they're interested, they're certainly welcome to attend the, the meeting. Yeah. So in the process, we float this at the... Yeah, I, I think that if we can, Tom, if we can just verify by charter as well as policies to make yeah. sure that we, whatever we do, we need to make sure we follow it. Yeah. But I took a really cursory, quick look, typed in a you know, control F and couldn't find anything that said that... It says it has to be reported to us. It doesn't say who has to report it or how and what form. So I think if the finance committee or joint finance committee gives that report, we accomplish the same thing. Great. Yeah. I'll, t I'll verify. Yes. Yeah. But you're saying they can have the map page come in. Yes, yeah, so yeah, uh, my goal is, absolutely. personally, yeah. I think that yeah, the okay. Joint yeah. Finance Committee could take a look at it, ask their yeah. questions, right. that page comes and gives their presentation yeah. just like they've done yeah. in the past. Yeah. Yeah. And then what we do as a, mm -hmm. what we do as a Joint Finance is that mm -hmm. you would then report to the Town Council, here is their presentation because it will be a, a presentation sure. PowerPoint. and mm -hmm. an executive summary and that becomes on the record of what, you know, our conversation was that focused. Okay. Okay. That's great. All right. Um, anything else on the joint finance committee meetings next week? You guys, good. good. On the nineteenth, the two p.m. Two p.m. Nineteenth right. here in chambers, right? Yes. Okay. Um, item nine was really to kind of confirm the 2018 budget expectations, but that's really, I think, you know, we're right now kind of still targeting that. How do, what were the words we used? Uh, around, <laughs> above, no more. <laughs> I just had it too on the three percent or less. Yeah. Yeah. But, but again, I, I think we need to. I think that's sort of our running premise right now. But we need to wait to the town council meeting and then we'll. The way it was phrased this past fiscal year was strive for a tax impact to be consistently around or below three percent. Right. And you might recall there was a lot of. Oh my um, God. <laughs> Imaginations <laughs> around uh, getting Word to that smithing point. around that one, yeah. But for now, I mean, that, that's sort of the expectation that I'm kind of thinking about. So I don't know. I, I'm, I'm with. I'm, yeah, I'm the same. I think uh, again. I think we, between the norms and the, we haven't changed the body, uh, you know. Uh, so uh, at least on the finance side of things, um, and I think the school's the same. So you know, I don't. I don't foresee us having any radical departures from our norms and goals from last year. I, I think it. I'd prefer to see it more like we said of a check-in of how did we do, yeah. um, and and what can we can, what, do something need to replace or more emphasis on something else. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm highly optimistic that we can achieve that goal, but yet reserve to make sure that okay. presentations are consistent. Motion with that. to adjourn. No. <laughs> Last item was just we've scheduled these meetings um, the second Thursday of the month at 6 p.m. going forward. There's a calendar out on the website that has that. The last item on the agenda is item 11. Any public comment? Anybody wants to share tonight? Good evening, gentlemen.
Good evening. Good evening. Larry Harwell, I'm Purity Drive. I think the uh, the bond rating having improved to double A is, is a tribute to all the council's hard work, and it's showing that it doesn't happen in one year. Mm. And the consistency is certainly important. So um, certainly glad to see that. Uh, it looks doesn't look nothing I heard tonight sounded like it would um, certainly threaten that in the future. Um, talking about trying to get to triple A, someone mentioned, well, we are in the, in the Portland market. We also have to remember our state. Mm. You know, when you're ranking, rank with Mississippi or, or West Virginia, mm. the age and uh, more people dying than, than being born here, and all those those statistics, uh, the folks in New York uh, take, take notice of that. Um, you mentioned the, uh, the goals were 2017 goals that are listed here in the presentation tonight. And I think I, under I understood you to say, well, that basically that these are goals that you're comfortable with and probably will carry forward this year. Is that accurate? Yeah, I mean I, I mean, I think what we're saying as far as the normal process is the town council meets and establishes their goals, and then, you know, and we try to be consistent with that. So, but yeah, that will generally probably be. Well, I got a couple points here, and it's really a, a different perspective, and I certainly, I don't know what can occur tonight or at some point, but just a, a different point of view, and one of um, maybe not, well, certainly not understanding your, your point of view and wanting to, to uh, understand it a little bit better. Uh, the, the goals list, you have seven goals listed, and two of them, the uh, first or the seventh one, pass budget on first vote and ultimately eliminate the need for the budget to go to vote. Those are two goals I see that they're great in the school board lab. That's their goal, or could be goals in there. Uh, so I don't see that 25% you know, of the goals of the council or of this committee should be uh, ones that are along the school board. Uh, we have a number of issues facing the town now. We have 1,400 uh, new apartments, comprehensive planning, first development, and the car going down. And each one of those are very complex and can take a lot of time and, and discussion and work. Um, the council, by state law, can only set the bottom line amount of money to be spent on schools. That's the single thing that the town council finance committee can be involved in. And this, I'm calling it a second observation, but it ties into the first one. Um, and that's the, the calendar that was in the presentation, and that one, that is for this year's right. And it shows that we're having seven joint meetings with the school finance committee. Um, we, the citizens of Scarborough, have been told repeatedly by the council and the town manager the school budget is separate from council oversight and management. Citizens are told we cannot comment on this. And I agree with this. I agree. It is the law. The school board has exclusive control over the line items, what those line items are going to be, and how much they're going to spend on them. But once again, the council only sets the bottom line. Why set aside seven joint meetings when, by law, we have no authority over them? Line items, either what they are or the amount. Um, the council is supposed to represent all of this in Scarborough and not be an adjunct to the school board. Um, if you want to learn a lot about the upcoming school budget, just take a look at um, the superintendent's presentation of the ramifications of the new teacher contract and voted and approved and in place for three years. That will tell you a lot about what that what that school budget is going to look like in another 90 days. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Do you comments or um, if I can, just to sure. clarify a couple of things. Um, so I, I just want to make sure it's clear. Um, the purpose, um, two years ago, we started the joint sessions um, as a way of building a relationship with the school board because of communication problems, um, both receiving and, um, and sending communications. 
and it was uh, problems on both sides. So it was a way of building a relationship so that we had a common ground. At least this is my yeah, personal yeah, belief. I agree. Um, so um, I am supportive of continuing those uh, relationship sessions. Um, but Mr. Howell, just so you know, I absolutely agree with you. Um, however, because of the level of criticism that the budget process has taken over the past couple of years, I think it was absolutely necessary and was needed in order to be where we are today, which is, I think, a little bit more comfortable with the budget process that we have. Um, while we talk, I believe I can say that I think that that joint session is an opportunity to talk about more strategic issues around school funding and why. And one of the things that we did last year was that there were metrics that the school department um, specifically identified for them to help us understand where their money is being spent and why. Um, I believe it's on their website. There were five metrics that Dr. Antwistle, um identified. Hopefully they're going to reaffirm those. So I think that they should go back because it does help us understand their budget. Um, and last is that um, when you said that um, uh, we are not allowed to comment on that, I hope that um, that's us as town councilors aren't allowed to sit down and talk about how much money is being spent, at least from a decision point of the budget. You know, how much is being spent on the high school versus on primary education, you know, on uh, K-2 versus special education. That is um, their job to do. So, um, but that doesn't mean citizens can't comment. It's, um, it, it's um, who you communicate to because there's nothing I can do or any counselor can do other than share that there are citizens that are concerned about it because that's what the school board is for. So, um, um, I, I agree. I would love to see them when we get to a point. I, I don't think we need to have seven every year. Um, and I don't, and I like that belief. I can almost, at least talking to them individually, I think the school board might say the same thing. Um, there should be a few because um, we do need to communicate with each other. So we're going to get there. I think we'll get back to the, the point we were at before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so being one of the other founding members of the joint sessions, um, you know, my goal was to open communications and, and really try and foster informed decision making because I think what we had was w through a lack of communication um, we had a couple of silos and pretty big silos really between the municipal side and, and the school side of things where decisions were being made on both sides independent of each other and not necessarily with a lot of discussion about how one decision impacted the other. Uh, so I thought the, the goal of bringing the two sides together wasn't necessarily to dictate line item details of budgets but to say you know um, you know listen here's what the, here's what it's a two-way street it's not just for the school board to advocate for the municipalities to say here's what our needs are and here's why and here's what's money we want it's also an opportunity for the council members to sit down with the school finance committee and say listen here are the things that are facing our town other than the schools um, you know debt service or uh, staffing needs and requirements so we can sit there and kind of couch things in a in a in an inclusive town perspective uh, our, our we, we can't spend a dollar more than once and we can only raise so many dollars in town and uh, I'll stand by my statement of a, all a budget is is a community's setting what its priorities are um, so I think uh, you know the, the the joint process has a lot of benefits to it in terms of communication I don't think that we we're certainly in a position from a council perspective having sat on both sides of the table where we're dictating what goes into the budget or uh, on their side and they're certainly not demanding uh, that, I haven't seen it personally, the demanding that we must do certain things on our side to, to make sure that they do what they need to do. I think it's been an open dialogue. It's been a uh, discussion of, as I said, more informed decision-making process. At the end of the day, um, the authority still lies with the council. And uh, the whole goal of passing a budget on the first round, I think, was, was more of a, my personal interpretation was a way to get the information out there of what boiling things down to its most critical needs and its most critical components. And then instead of just throwing our hands in the air and saying, well, everybody votes on the school budget alone. If it passes, great. If it doesn't, no problem. We all kind of collectively as town leaders and municipal officials say, we've talked about this. This is, we've had the discussions and the dialogues. We feel this is the best approach for the town as a whole. So I think it's important for us as community leaders to have that joint statement coming forward instead of having the school board wants one thing and the municipality wants another thing and we have that potential conflict already built in. So um, I do think that we'll get to a point where if it's more, for lack of a better word, institutionalized, where 
that, that dialogue becomes more of a common occurrence and I know the staff works very, very closely together even when things weren't necessarily um, positive between the elected bodies. That's still a necessity that they have to go through for sure. Um, I, I think we'll get to the point where it, it might be a little bit more transparent. Uh, not transparent, so it's a bad word. I think it'll be a little bit more uh, 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 a, set, a set norm and a set policy. But like anything, if communication and transparency is our goal, I think you, talking never hurts anything never hurts anything and then I think that's part of our responsibility as elected officials to to have that dialogue and 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 communicate that out properly in a way that we're all on the same page together. Mr. I should have mentioned uh, in the report earlier on the agenda when we met to plan the first joint meeting some of the territory we talked about that would fill those future meetings uh, had to do not only as uh, the chairman reported areas of cooperation but it was also each side of identifying their budget drivers, just so the other one could understand it. Right. Um, also, looking for areas of joint cooperation and joint mm -hmm. impact. We both have long-range facility plans that we're working on. We need to understand each other's needs mm -hmm. so the taxpayer can equally understand it. Uh, so there's there's fertile ground without getting into the minutia of either budget, uh, certainly not line by line. Right. I, I just want to so I. I, I if you look at the work that has been undertaken and the activities that we've taken both as a committee but then as a council and then even as a school board and the committee, we, you know, to some extent there, is, there was an overreaction. We wanted to do everything possible or that we could think of in order to improve the system and I think that as time goes by we're able to scale back some of that. So as an example, while I believe that the forum should continue, the public forum around the budget and the budget increase, the question is um, what is the appropriate uh, medium uh, to communicate that because we went from 120 people um, at the first one to less than 20 at the last one. So the question is, is you know, um, it's, it's refining the work that we've uh, selected to do, and then how do we, um, you know, get better at it? So, and do you interpret the, the drop off as meaning we're doing a good job, or as people are disheartened, disenchanted? I mean, that's that's always the that's a glass half full question. Is it? <laughs> yes, it is. Um, any other public? Comments? Thank you very much yeah, for the comments, thank Larry. Thank you. Everybody else. Anybody else? And with that, then, I guess. Move to adjourn. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, Thank you, everybody. One of these days, whatever my last day on the council is going to be, I'm going to vote against adjournment.